Hey guys, welcome back to the Movies and Stuff podcast. On today's episode, we are going to be reviewing a film that is very near and dear to my heart. It is Christopher Nolan's Dunkirk. Um, yeah, it's it's just a fantastic film, and highly recommend you check it out. Um, me and Christopher Nolan actually share a birthday, so that's pretty cool. And my dad majored in history, so I watched the film with him. And he was, he's just a massive fan. He loved the film. We'll get to the maybe slight inaccuracies of the film later. So, I'm going to give you the setting for the film. And I'm going to talk about it a little bit. And how it compares and contrasts with the original events. So, here you go. It's the middle of the Second World War. And the Nazis have pushed British and French, French troops with their backs on the beaches of Dunkirk. The Allies hold strong for about a week. Enduring Nazi bombings, propaganda, starvation, dying of thirst, and much more. Many soldiers died, and since the troops were backed up against the English Channel, the Royal Navy tried to send help, but all attempts failed. It was only a matter of time until the Allied forces were decimated, and Germany moved on to take England. This was shaping up to be a colossal military disaster, as Prime Minister Winston Churchill put it. Every attempt to bomb and torpedo medical and escape vessels was had. German U-boats controlled the channel, and their planes controlled the skies. Several times, the RAF, which is the Royal Air Force, attempted to launch an attack to try and gun down the Nazi planes, failing every time, and they were always pushed back. There were about 400,000 men stranded on the beaches of Dunkirk, and hope seemed slim until May 26th of 1940. With miraculously still waters and low-hanging fog for about a week until June 6th. Nearly every person was evacuated. Evacuated. Many sustained injuries and shell shock. Winston Churchill, the UK's Prime Minister at the time, had several things to say, including his famous We Shall Never Surrender speech. Churchill addressed the House of Parliament and gave this rousing speech to, mu to much applause. Um, many civilian boats were had and used to get those young men back home. They brought the boys back home and essentially saved Britain in the process because it was shaping up to be bad. So now that you have the setting for Dunkirk, Christopher Nolan's first and not last because Oppenheimer is coming out this summer and I am so excited. Anyways, this movie um, has, it's a war movie, obviously. It has very little dialogue in it. It's a lot of action, very tense soundtrack by the fantastic Hans Zimmer. Um, there's some dialogue between characters, not much. And in terms of historical accuracy, the film hits the nail on the head. From the opening scene of propaganda flyers being dropped from planes onto the heads of British and French soldiers, you can tell the film is tense. Very little dialogue is had between characters. You barely get to know the characters' names by the end. This film also takes, it switches between timelines, and by the end of the film, all the timelines meet up. You have the civilians, the fighter pilots, and the soldiers on the beach. There's no point in me not trying to spoil the ending, because one, I've already spoiled it, because, you know, they get back home, and two, it's, it's a historical film. So, I mean, we're not all speaking German and still saluting people, certain people, which might get me, you know, in trouble saying on YouTube or something but um yeah we're still not all saluting Hitler which is which is good so clearly they didn't win um, the film concludes with one of the characters reading one of the greatest speeches of all time which I've mentioned um, given by Winston Churchill properly known as we shall fight them on the beaches or its official title being we shall never surrender it's a great speech very impious very inspiring it's even more powerful as the film comes to a close with fire trains and a powerful patriotic statement that could be said for any country on earth i'm, I'm going to read an excerpt from the speech because i love it a lot i have myself full confidence that if all do their day, duty and nothing is neglected and if the best arrangements are made as they are being made we shall prove ourselves once again to defend our island home to ride out the storm of war, and to outlive the menace of tyranny, if necessary for years, if necessary alone. At any rate, that is what we are going to try and do. 
That is the resolve of His Majesty's government, every man of them. That is the will of Parliament and the nation, the British Empire and the French Republic, linked together in their cause and in their need, will defend to the death their native soil, avoiding each other like good comrades to the utmost of their strength. Even though the large tracts of Europe and many old and famous states have fallen or may fall into the grip of the Gestapo and all odious apparatus of Nazi rule, we shall not flag or fail. We shall go on to the end. We shall fight in France. We shall fight on the seas and oceans. We shall fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air. We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall fight on the beaches. We shall fight on the landing grounds. We shall fight in the fields and in the streets. We shall fight in the hills. We shall never surrender. And even if, which I do not for a moment believe, this island or a large part of it were subjugated and starving, then our empire beyond our seas, armed and guarded by the British fleet, would carry on the struggle, until in God's good time the new world, with all its power and might, steps forth to rescue and liberation of the old. Wow, what, a, what an ending in a phenomenal, historically accurate film, as I've said many times. Um, it's accurate about 98% of the time. The costumes, accents, accents, language, planes, boats, technology, and bathrooms, the beach, are all accurate. Um, like I said, I watched a film with my dad, who majored in history in college, so he, he, me and him are very impressed. He's also a big fan of Darkest Hour, which you should also check out. It's the life of Winston Churchill throughout the war. Fant fantastic film. Gary Oldman's amazing. Um, there's only really one small detail that I noticed and he noticed when watching Dunkirk is the amount of bullets in Farrier's plane. Farrier's played by Tom Hardy, and he's probably my favorite character in the movie. Um, yeah, it's, I counted one time when I watched the movie. Um, I think it, I think he uses Spitfire. Spitfires only had about 15 seconds of ammunition in them. That's why you have very short spurts. Um, I counted, he's, his plane used about 20, which, eh. It's close, but it's a slight annoyance to the major history nerds like my dad. Is. The enemy tanks. Have um. Anyways, the film boasts an all-star cast, including many musicians. Why? The most famous of which being Harry Styles. That's right, all you teenage guys and gals. Harry Styles in this movie as a soldier. I know why you girls want to watch it now. Like I said before, many great actors here: Michael Caine, Michael Caine, Kenneth Branagh, Fiona Whitehead, Cillian Murphy, and James Darcy who was the voice of Jarvis in the Marvel films. I cannot recommend this film enough, and I hope this opens up a new perspective on the soldiers' lives, drinking from hoses, burying their fellow men on the beach, and using the beach as a toilet. I also hope this opens up the world to Christopher Nolan and a deep love for history. Make sure to subscribe, and have a great rest of your day. Bye!